Hello everyone, this is Mirror Nuts. Hope you guys are doing well. Today we'll be continuing the OAS Top 10 2021 video series. Today we'll be looking at the fourth risk that is insecure design. The first three risks I've already covered in the previous videos. You all can go and check that out. So let's just get started. So let's look at 2070 and 2021 for insecure design and we can see that insecure design is a new entry to 2021 and it was not present in 2017. So first let's look at design. So design happens before creating a web application or an application and over there all the things are mentioned like which technologies have to be used and where the user will supply the input and how the connection will be going to the database and uh, what kind of data is sanitized and so on. A lot of things present in the design. So design is something like you take that and then you implement whatever things are present in the design document or something. So obviously design and implementation are two different things. So if your design has some security control which is present, and your implementation phase you know misses out on that control that means there's that's a failure at the implementation end and not at the design end but in the design end itself you're not having the security controls in place like you know in order to avoid sql injections you are not uh, designing the application to have like stored procedures or something so that time this is a flaw at the design end itself so basically uh insecure design is like you in the design phase itself you're not having the proper security controls in place so let's look at a few of the examples over here so first is like application data access with user id only so this is something like a web application is created and a user will enter the user id and gets the result that is so basically it's more commonly seen in like examination results or something where you add the student id or user id over there and then later on we'll get the result that is uh, the results or something so there's no password or something present so if you know the uh, user ID of any other user over here so you can actually get the results of the other user as well so that's basically because the design itself says uh, that uh, there has to be no authentication or something it's like there's no password present in the design phase over there so that's why they don't implement it so second thing is no limit for incorrect login attempts so here there is a user id present here there is a password present and basically if there are any incorrect passwords which are entered so that means the application does not uh, you know stop over there so like most of the applications after five incorrect attempts it will tell uh, a timeout or something of that sort or it may even ban you for like one day or something so over here if the design phase does not include like what has to be done if there are incorrect logins so that means there's no limit and you know brute force attacks can be possible over here so then we come to plain text password storage and database so basically over here what happens is uh, whenever there is a password which is saved in the database it is present in plain text so that is by design itself they have to, you know uh, mentioned that we don't need to save the password in hash or something or salted hash and they save it in plain text so that is a insecure design flaw obviously if it was present in the design document that uh we need to actually have hashes uh, present in place of plain text password so if that will be a failure at the implementation end but if in design it's not present implementation it will not be present as well so that means whenever there is a compromise of the database or the particular server database server um, that time these passwords can be retrieved and since it is plain text it can be you know misused further then comes uh, not, uh, not using secure TLS connections. So whenever the application is built, they are like, okay, we don't want to use TLS connections because the organization doesn't want to spend on SSL certificates or something. So this is one thing at the design itself, we are like, no, we don't want to use it. That's it. So we'll use plain text uh, protocol. That's fine with us, something of that sort. Then there is another thing called not encrypting sensitive data at rest. So whenever a web application may process some sensitive data and it may be present on the file system of the server or it can be present in the database that is, uh, you know, some specific tables. 
So those tables are not encrypted or the files are not encrypted on the server. So if the database or the servers are compromised and these things are present in plain text. So obviously there are many more examples for insecure design. These are just a few, of, few uh, you know, like uh, easy ones to understand. So let's look at the incorrect login attempts example uh, in a bit more detail. And over here we do have a user allies and there's a banking web application server present over here which accepts account id and a four digit numeric pin so that is basically as good as the password of that particular user so we do have allies user over here she wants to actually um, connect and log into the bank portal and then later on she wants to see and check or like you know how much balance uh, or something she has so she will enter the account id or uh, account id is 1001 and her pin is 1234 so this is what she sends to the web application server obviously there'll be some login page or something and later on uh, bank web application server you know checks for this particular credential username and the pin sorry the account id and the pin and then later on it will you know authenticate it will say okay this is a valid credential and then later on it will send Alice's information so now there's another user over here dot and he's you know he understands that this particular banking web application server actually is flawed first thing is that it is only accepting four digit numeric pin okay so that is numeric that it's not alphanumeric as well and since it's four digits so the maximum possibilities would be like from 0000 to 9999 that is like around 10,000 possibilities and also this web application server does not have any incorrect login attempts ban or something like it does not limit you you know after three attempts or something it's not like hey you know uh, try login after 10 minutes or something of that sort so first he he somehow guesses the account id okay there's another thing that this bank is using the account id for login and allies being the first customer of this particular bank the account id starts from like 1001 so it's easy to guess maybe Darth has an account as well in this bank and he somehow guesses this account id and then the pin obviously he starts from 0000 and he tries to you know add one and so on so first when he tries to enter a wrong pin over here bank will send information that invalid login obviously the bank has a proper authentication mechanism in place which checks for the account id and pin properly and only if it is correct then it will you know send the information or it will help you log in or something of that sort so that again sends 0001 and so on obviously it's trying some sort of like a brute force attack or something and then later on over here he gets invalid login again so now uh, that is like he you know makes a script basically and it will you know go and increment one 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 it will just go on incrementing till he reaches like one two three four so when dart makes this request on this web application server the ser since the details so you know the credentials are correct of allies so this web application server is going to respond with the Alice's information and it will help him authenticate as a Alice user. So let's look at this in a much better way. We do have this dummy banking application over here. Once again, just ignore the UI and uh, Alice user is trying to log in over here, entering the account ID that is 1001 and entering the pin that is 1234. So once she does that, that is the right pin and account ID, she will get access to her account. She has like around $1,000 uh, balance over here. And then there are some other options like transfer, change pin and so on. So after this, uh, the user dot over here, as we saw earlier, he tries to get the, you know, he guesses the account ID of allies and then later on, he tries to enter the pin starting from 0000. And then later on, that does not work actually and then later on he tries for 0001 and then post that he keeps enumerating like he keeps adding 111 like that because the web application does not have any security mechanism in place so that you know it stops him from uh login or trying any login for that account id so once he reaches to one two three four it's as good as alice's credential right so 
Once he tries that and he gets access to Alice's account, which is showing the same balance, $1,000, and he can maybe transfer or do something or change a pin eventually. So that's what it is like, you know, with login attempts. And if it is not present in your design phase itself or design phase of the application, so that means it will not be implemented as well. So this is like just one high level overview of this particular insecure design. And if you guys have any queries, please do ask me in the comment section below. If you guys like the video, please do give a thumbs up and do subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day. Take care.